Okay, y'all, I was trying to do a live video with all the fancy equipment so that the audio and the video would be better. However, Facebook Live was not working on my computer, so here we are with the phone set up. So hopefully the audio isn't too bad for today. But I wanted to share this topic because it was so important and it comes up time and time and time again in the clients that I work with. And it's also a concept that I had to learn as well in my journey of being a healthier person and setting healthy boundaries. And the big boundary that clients often have to learn, not only with others, but also with themselves, is that they are not responsible for guessing or reading in between the lines or predicting if somebody else is mad at them, if somebody else is mad at them, if somebody else is disappointed in them or sad with them or frustrated with them, they are not responsible for guessing that. It is the other person's responsibility to tell us if they are upset, annoyed, frustrated, or not okay with us in some way. The reason this is crucial is because often the clients that I work with, they grew up in family systems where people didn't communicate clearly about their anger. So when somebody was upset about something, they may have said it in a passive aggressive way where they didn't really actually address it, but maybe treated the person differently instead of actually talking about how they felt. Or sometimes this looked like the silent treatment or just complete avoidance altogether. And when people grow up in family systems like this, or if they have experiences like this in their romantic relationships, they can learn to kind of try to read the environment. And when I say read the environment, I mean like the emotional environment. So they pick up on things when people are kind of in a funk and they learn to try to read between the lines and guess when somebody is upset with them or annoyed with them because growing up, it was survival for them to do so. We also will see this in family systems where, you know, one parent was an alcoholic or maybe just wasn't healthy in some way. So again, like the, the kiddo learns to read the emotional environment and try to prevent and kind of walk on eggshells to make sure that people are okay because people being okay meant them being safe. So I have a lot of empathy for people initially having this view where they try to guess when others are angry and they try to kind of control that emotional environment. I totally have empathy for that. And I will tell you that until you learn to let other people directly communicate with you and you even set that self boundary that you're not going to stew or feel anxious about the other person potentially being mad at you, your life is not going to be as healthy. Um, and there's so much in the world energy wise that you're missing out on. And I guess I could just speak from my own experience. It is so exhausting to try to guess how everyone around you is feeling, right? And half the time, honestly, we're probably wrong. And when people grow up in these different types of environments, they may actually default to being biased to assuming the worst about other people's emotional states. So if somebody comes into our emotional space and they're kind of grumpy or frustrated, you know, we don't really have a context for that unless they tell us. Somebody who might be in this state of mind will assume, oh my gosh, they don't like me, or maybe I did something wrong, or, you know, why are they mad at me? When in fact, you know, they might have had an argument with their spouse before work, or, you know, had some trouble, you know, in traffic, and that could have, you know, messed with their headspace, and that has more to do with where they're at in their mental space. Even if people are mad at you, so say that is the case, when they don't directly communicate it to you, that is not a healthy thing on their part either, right? Because they're not learning how to healthfully communicate things and express how they're feeling. So if we try to read between the lines and get them to talk to us about it, we're actually enabling them to not communicate in a healthy way. The other part of that is so much of the time, people's anger towards us, especially if it's like a, a large amount of anger, has more to do with what's going on internally inside of them 
And so if we get offended or feel like we have to change our ways or do things differently every time they get angry, we might be enabling them to not deal with whatever is happening internally for them, which causes their anger towards other people, or at least the extreme amount of anger. You know, I do believe that anger is is valid and it can serve a purpose of sending a message to us about what's okay and what isn't. But when that is is a healthy thing, people communicate about it and they set boundaries and they assume the best about the other person first. If the other person isn't doing that, that's not about you. That's absolutely not about you. And that's going to emotionally drain you and exhaust you throughout life if you're constantly picking up on people's angry energy and trying to read between the lines. Even in my own life, like, you know, I, I just have made a vow that I am no longer reading between the lines. If somebody is upset with me, they're disappointed, if they're sad with something that I've done, it is 100% up to them to let me know because I cannot read their mind. I can't, and I choose not to, right? Even if I can kind of pick up on something, even if they're being a little passive aggressive and I'm like, whew, I kind of sense something there. You know, if it's really bothered, if it's starting to get to me, I might just check in with them. And if they say they're fine, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to validate that and I'm going to walk away from this. But if they don't tell me directly that they're upset with me, I'm just going to assume that things are okay or that they're going through their own thing and they just need a little bit of space and time to process it. And what I found over time is most of the time people aren't upset with me or you know even if they are it really kind of forces them to eventually come to me and talk to me about it and we can have a really healthy good dialogue about it and so this way of living has been so good for me and like my own mental health and and not being exhausted by trying to predict if people are good with me or not Um, and it's also good for them because it enables them and it helps them learn how to communicate effectively I'm no longer reading between the lines. My life is much more peaceful that way. And it also encourages me to have direct, healthy communication with other people. So I just wanted to share that thought. That's a good self and other boundary to have, to not read between the lines that if someone's upset with you, they have to tell you directly. And this applies for all relationships, you know, romantic relationships, family relationships, Just, you know, and and even communicating that with people, like, unless you tell me otherwise, I'm going to assume we're good because that's the way that I can live my life in a way that is peaceful and in a way where my energy isn't being drained by trying to guess and read between the lines or read into things, right? Which often can be inaccurate. I hope you all are well. I hope you're able to set those boundaries in your own life and give yourself that self-boundary too to live your best life and to ensure that your relation, your communication and relationships is healthy and just has the opportunity to be healthy. Um, but it can be hard to do. It can be hard to switch. Um, so give yourself grace as you're going through that switch. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday. I will check in with you next or tomorrow, Thursday. So have a great day and no longer guess if other people are angry because again, it is their responsibility to let you know if they are upset with you. Take care.